Hello there ladies and gents and a very well welcome to this, the inaugural edition of The Wednesday Week, the brand new Sheffield Wednesday podcast. Now with this being our first recording and uh, the first time we've ever actually met, and uh, well all the lots and lots of firsts in fact, uh, we did have run into a few problems, uh, forcing Beastie to exclaim, Well, it was like I'm outside its shed. <laughs> <laughs> And another little problem that we uh, ran into was uh, Mr. Fudge got caught as he was at work and should have been working while he was recording with us. Uh, uh, Sorry, uh, lad, that's, that's the boss telling me to put us at work. Oh, crap. <laughs> I got caught. I'm sat in Byron's chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But not to worry, ladies and gents, uh, all these little creases will get ironed out eventually. Uh, also, towards the end of this sound, it does go a little bit mad, so I shall be popping back in later and cutting it in there so you know where to get us. Okay, ladies and gents, sit back and enjoy the show, The Wednesday Week. Roll it, Jeeves! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to this, the very first edition of The Wednesday Week, the uh, brand spanking new Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm Lord Hillsborough, and with me uh, today we have Dan Fudge from the uh, Fudge and Dave podcast. Hello there, Fudge. How's it going, all right, lads? Not too bad at all, thank you. And uh, a little birdie tells me you've been out enjoying yourself for, uh, at a certain concert this weekend. Yeah, last night I went to go and watch uh, Steps at the uh, Sheffield Arena, as it's known now the Motor Point Arena. Got to get the sponsorship in there, I get told off. And uh, I was a bit annoyed all day, actually, mate. They, um, they messed about with Better the Devil You Know. Uh, they, uh, they mixed it up with Lady Gaga's Judas. And to be fair, if you're mixing Kylie, a Kylie song, sang by Steps, mixed with Lady Gaga, it's a share away from being the gayest song ever. <laughs> It's just not done, old boy. It's just not done. It's, it's, it's just not cricket. Also on the line with us uh, today, we've got uh, Beastie from the Owls Alive website. Hello there, Beastie. How are you doing, mate? Not too bad at all. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, yeah, a fantastic ramble again this uh, this week. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know that I don't like to uh, keep things short. Yeah, that's jolly good, that old boy. I suggest anybody yeah, needs to pop over there and, uh, and I'll read that. And also on the line, we've got uh, Ed from over at Wednesday. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, mate. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, sir. I'd be a lot better if Jeeves could get the consistency of my scrambled eggs, right? But apart from that, I'm doing very well indeed. <laughs> you can't get the stuff these days, Lord H. Oh, there's certain drugs that can uh, help you along with that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> so then, gents, it's been a, a very interesting week for the uh, for the Owls this week. Uh, um, a one all draw down at Colchester, and of course with the uh, the um, other side of Sheffield winning. Oh, it pains me to say it. Uh, um, it's been a bit of a bugger for us, to tell you the truth. Uh, Beastie, you were down at the match. Could you uh, uh, tell us how it went? Uh, well. The first half were just one of the most dull displays that I've seen for, from us for a, a long while, certainly under Dave Jones. Um, as usual, we, since Dave Jones came in, we always pick it up in the second half, but um, it was very, very uninspiring stuff. Uh, and, and to my mind, Colchester were there to be taken, because they weren't a good side. Uh, it, uh, it seems to me, from listening to it on the radio at my end, uh, um, Colchester were trying very, very hard to, uh, to frustrate us again. Uh, all these uh, chaps falling on the floor, and uh, uh, basically any time Wednesday got the gander up, uh, um, uh, it was a case uh, they stopped it by laying down. Well, I, th I think that might be a little bit unfair, to be honest. They, they were certainly nothing special, but we didn't get, get to grips with midfield at all, and for the first time... In a long time, I thought our defence looked a little bit dodgy, um, especially in that first half, where he got to the good old reliable oof ball far too many times. Mm. Also, uh, you were there, of course, Ed, with uh, Wednesday night tweeting away, so uh, uh, what, what do you think about the game? I mean, do you think we missed uh, 
Rob Jones at the back, a bit of leadership, give the boys some month. No, listen, you know, we we were coming off the back of an absolutely fantastic Easter, um, and anyone who's, who, who thought that Miguel Lera deserved to be dropped um, is out of their mind. He was, he was a complete footballer over the last week or so. He, he were everywhere on pitch. Um, yeah, it, as Beastie said, it were, it were a frustrating first half, and to be honest, I think we, we were at a position where we'd been chasing that long, and we knew that we couldn't afford to slip up. And I think maybe just just for once, the nerves got to us a little bit. We didn't really show enough invention. We didn't, we didn't show enough, you know, style. We didn't show enough pace. Um, and and yeah, we were, we were found wanting. It were a it were a, a performance very much like the, the sort of the bad the bad days under Mason, such as they were. That when we had a bit of a dip in form. Um, we didn't really go out and dominate teams. But, let, you know, let's not take anything away from Colchester. They're a team that have, have, have frustrated the top teams at their patch, and they came up with a game plan, and, you know, they executed it. So, yeah, we've only got ourselves to blame. Right. But, um, I think that maybe at 90 minutes, I think we were all, we were all very, uh, very disappointed. But I think if we're going to drop points in this run-in, um, then this was the time to do it, because we've still got enough time to then turn it around again. And maybe, uh, just maybe, that they'll take the foot off the gas to the point where they've got two very difficult games now against MK Dons and Stevenage. And uh, if, they're, if they think they've got one foot in the automatic promotion places, then they could very much come a cropper. No, no. I, mean, I, I, I agree. I, no, go on, Beastie, I, sorry. sorry I, yeah, I agree with Ed there. But, um, certainly about it um, looking a bit like when we, when we were playing under Megson. Um, and at the end of the game, it felt like a defeat to me. But don't you think that um, we looked really, really tired, Ed, at the end of that game? I mean, uh, Mikel Antonio looked dead on his feet. Yes, I mean, so much of what we do, um, certainly under Dave Jones, has revolved around getting that ball wide and, and, and using Antonio and Johnson um, to really scare the defence. You know, they, when they're tired, we can't do that. And that leaves us in a position where we're punting the ball up, hopefully, again. You know, and I, I, I'll give Gary Medine his due. <laughs> And the last few weeks, he really has uh, upped his work rate to the point where he's winning everything in the air. But he can only do so much, and there isn't that understanding between him and him and Niall Ranger. Um, as much as I, I like Ranger as a player, but he spends an awful lot of time jogging around aimlessly when he's, he's not actually there for, for Medine's flick-ons. And it, Medine won virtually everything in air. I'll tell you what, Ed, I'm sorry to cut in there, mate, but you just brought up a point that I was, uh, was going to bring up and ask you about. Um, the self-styled, what he calls himself, the Power Ranger... Um, what, are you, what are your thoughts about him? Because just after the game, he tweeted something like, um, I had a stinker today, lads, better luck next time, or something like that. He was, he was quite self-critical. And, um, and those of you who follow him on Twitter, um, he does post some, some odd things. But, um, but I was wondering what, what you thought of him, what you thought of the player. Did you find him lazy? Is he quick? Is he fast? Is he driven? I mean, I, I didn't make it to the game because I didn't tell you guys this early because I thought I'd save it till we're on air. But I, um, I was driving up from Southampton to get to, uh, to, get to Essex and I uh, stopped for a bite to lunch in a, uh, in a, in a restaurant in Basildon and uh, it got descended on by the gypsies that live at Dale Farm just up the road and uh, we all got blocked in by the police and we couldn't get to the game. <laughs> Is, is this something that happens to you often, old boy? I, I, say, I, I just attract this sort of trouble, mate. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's got to be the most unique excuse for missing a match that I've ever heard. <laughs> it is, isn't it? You don't get many like that, do you? <laughs> no, no. So, so, yeah, so my arranger. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think he's... Uh, you put him in the right place at the right time in the box and he will, he will finish. He, you know, he's a natural striker, but if you're looking for someone who's going to... Um, to, to, to produce the work rate that's needed um, and be a, be a complete player and actually link play, uh, you're looking at the wrong lad. He's, uh, he's clearly mental. He's, you know, him and Medine together, between two, they've probably got four brain cells between two of them. But, I was uh, going to say, I'd love to go on a night out with Niall Ranger, Gary Medine and Stephen Bywater. I mean, they're all as mad as a fish in petrol, a lot of them, aren't they? They're <laughs> 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 out of a tin and punching a horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, gents, what do we think uh, about, uh, it pains me to say, but it seems that we're waiting for the blunts to slip up now. I mean, like I say, we, they've got two difficult games. Uh, Stevenage, uh, I mean, can't argue with what Stevenage have done the last few seasons. They've been absolutely fantastic. Uh, unbelievable. And, and like I said, they've got that 6-0 uh, that uh, victory over the weekend. Absolutely fantastic for them. And, uh, of course, they've got the uh, MK Dons to play yet as well. 
Uh, do, can we see him slipping up? Um, oh, they'll no, slip I, up, I, definitely. I've always been confident that they, they'll slip up. Always. I, uh, I think the uh, I think the big the big talking point I think this week obviously is the uh, and I, I want to be quite respectful when I talk about this is the uh, is the trial that Chad Evans is going through right now. I mean he's clearly a, a, a large player for them and without and like I said without going into too much detail about the case itself I think um, I think something like that could weigh could weigh down on a man and uh, and his mind, his his head might not be in the game and. As unfortunate as it is, and, uh, and I'll take it, but I'll take it when I can. Um, I think this might have a bearing on, on the end of the season. This uh, this entire debacle, and uh, it, it's a it's a sad occasion that it is. Don't get me wrong, but like I said, I'll take it. Does anyone know how, how he performed on Saturday for them? Did he play? Did he play 60 minutes? Did he play the full game? What? Do you know what? It's, it's not like I look at their. Uh, I only look at how many points they've got. To be honest, I couldn't even tell you who scored for them. I can't bring myself to look at their you know, if I watch anything, if I, if I watch anything at all that the Blunts do, I feel awfully dirty afterwards. <laughs> I have to have Jeeves hose me down in the back. <laughs> I saw his goal on uh, on football league show, um, and to me, it didn't look like the court case has had any effect on him. Really? I don't know. What, I'll what then? I'll he, 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 two things there. It, Either he's got unbelievable strength of character and, and mentality, which, you know, in a, in a twisted way you've got to give respect to, or he's just, he doesn't actually care what's going on in his personal life and he's, he only cares about playing football. But, you know, for us, none of that really matters. All that matters is, is how he's performing on the pitch for them. And if he's scoring goals, that's bad news for Sheffield Wednesday. Well, I think you're dead right, Ed, to be honest. Yeah. I, think, I think it's, um, when it comes to the running in the season that, that, that we're in, I think it's just a, a massive twist of fate. It's the blunts that we're up against, as daft as it sounds, because, like, bear in mind, we're in here of our own accord. We're in this four-point gap because of ourselves. I mean, dropping points at, at uh, Colchester, Walsall, getting a spanking at the early part of the season. That's, do you know what I mean? It's, 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 all, it's all conducive to ourselves. It's just unfortunate the team we're chasing is them. Right then, gents, I think... Uh, uh... That's quite enough blunt stock for today. If we need any more of that, uh, um... <laughs> oh, Jeeves, Jeeves! They can do their own podcast. Pardon? They can do their own podcast. I mean, none of them have even got internet yet. Yeah, I've been on got... that place, man. There's, there's half a dozen of them, and they ain't got a clue what they're doing. They've not got a portable <laughs> thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>